Hey guys, I'm going to be showing y'all what high to low poly baking is and how to do it in Substance Painter. Um, so here's two um, of the same outfits I have here in the Blender. And um, one of these is only like 5,000 polygons when another one is um, around 7 million polygons. And as you can see here, you can probably not even spot the difference at all. And if I went to wireframe here just to prove that that's true, as you can see, here's the low poly compared to my high poly. If I go out of wireframe mode, you can see they look pretty much exactly the same. Um, so I'm going to be showing you all how this pretty much works and how to do it. Um, a quick explanation of how this is, how this magic even works. If I go ahead and reset my objects here back in the center. Um, so pretty much what it's happening is it's pretty much taking anything that is on your high poly and it's pretty much like printing it on top of your low poly mesh that you made um, or projecting it as as you can call it. Um, the way it, it works is it uses a light rays to shoot from your high poly on top of your low poly and it pretty much uses that to make normal maps and other types of maps or substance painting like curvature, height, data, um, ambient occlusion, stuff like that to um, allow you to have all those details back onto a low poly. So um, whenever you are doing your high to low stuff here, of course you want to have your high poly and then um, you gotta make a low poly version of that. If y'all do want to tutorial that in the future, um, y'all can join my discord down below and I have a tutorial suggestions list and um, if you want to see how I do my um, my low poly process of how I how I make low poly meshes. Um, don't be afraid to go down my Discord and just um, type that in there, and I'll take that highly into consideration. But um, anyways, whenever you do make your low poly, you're gonna want to actually have both of your objects pretty much right on top of each other. So if you don't have them on top of each other when you export these, it will not work because, like I said before, it's taking pretty much whatever is on your high poly is going to project it onto your low poly so you want them to be right on top of each other so it can project it properly. So once you do that you want to export them separately. You want to export one you can name it you know your low poly low and your high poly high. And then if we go into substance painter here as you can see I kind of already have a finished one in here but I'm going to show you all how to uh, properly bake that so I'm going to go to my texture set settings and delete all these. So whenever you start Substance Painter and you import your mesh. Of course, it's going to look like this. Um, and now in Substance Painter, they actually just had an update to where they completely overhauled or overhauled how baking works. So I thought this would be the perfect timing to make this video for you guys. So um, when you uh, go into Substance Painter, you should have a new logo on the top corner over here on the right side next to um, where your tools and stuff is at. If you don't see it, you might need to shrink this down to see it, depending on how your um, configuration is. So um, if we click on that croissant here, um, actually let me remove my high poly, I already have it in here. Once you have it, let me turn my stuff back on, it should look like this when you start. You should have this weird like wireframe of your model in here, and then you should have all the stuff on this side. So pretty much um, get your high poly in here. You're going to go to high poly parameters, you're going to click on the little folder here, and you're going to pretty much find your high poly and import it in. As you can see, I have it imported in now, and um, the blue is your high poly, so if I go over here, you can see the baking visualization. Um, you can turn it off to pretty much show your low poly again. But um, if I turn off projected mesh, that is pretty much what your low poly is in this um, projection mode. So I do that and I turn off the cage and the wireframe you can see here is the uh, high poly. And then you can actually change it to whatever color you like, but by default it keeps it blue. Um, so I turn these back on. So what the cage is, is that's what this like hologram thing is here, showing your wireframe. And the cage is what I was talking about before, it's pretty much what is being projected on to your low poly. So if I move that out, you can see um, that's pretty much what's being shot. It's shooting the rays onto your high poly and to project it onto your low. Um, so, what you want to do is you see if I crank this down, 
you can see all this red start to appear. And what this red is, it's pretty much telling you that um, that the cage is too close and it's not going to bake onto the mesh properly. So if I went ahead and just baked this real quick. Just to show you what's going on. And if I hide the baking visualiz uh, visualization and turn on project mesh again, you can see that uh, it don't look so good. It's all broken. So make sure whenever you are adjusting these um, the max frontal distance, you want to make it make sure it's just to where you don't see any red anymore, or whatever matching air color you have it set to. Um, so we just look around and get just to where there's no red. You want to try to get to close as possible to your main mesh without having any airs. So if I crank this up just enough. Good look around. See a little red up here and down here, so I'm gonna adjust that a bit more. And if you like move it around and accidentally shoot up like that, you can just press Ctrl Z and it'll snap it right back into place to where you had it before. Um, but that looks like that is good. So now I'm just press bake again. And as you can see, if I decide to hide that now, as you can see, here's my little poly, and it looks looks great. And then um, once you get a result you like, you can just uh, click on Return to Painting Mode, and then boom, you're done. You're good to go. Then um, what's really great about doing high-low baking is, um, for example, you've got generators or like smart materials. They can take advantage of all the sculpt details you put in. So if I put in like a uh, find something that's like some wear and tear on it, leave the glossy plastic that's like stained. Go to base color. You can see it actually knows where to grab like parts that should have a shadow and stuff, and it'll actually put stuff there like it needs to. Especially like the dusty material, it knows like where stuff should be caked on and it'll actually apply stuff and all that and then you can use that for your own smart materials you make like for example I in a previous video I showed you how to make a actual um, material where it actually kind of makes a really nice base layer for your models and stuff here's here's the proper one you can see it's just base color and it makes a really good um, base layer so you can actually have really good details just in your base color which is really good for unity and stuff but other than that this is how you do high to low baking um and like i said before if you want to know how to do like low poly modeling for your high poly and stuff or the opposite if you can take your high poly or your low poly and then make a high poly out of it and add more details um just go to my discord down below and um i have a tutorial suggestions area don't be afraid to type that in in there and then um if i get enough people requesting for it then I'll uh, highly consider on making a tutorial for it. But other than that, this is how you hide a low poly bake and uh, have a good one.